This is the Bible Ranger, and today is the Sanctuary in the Wilderness, episode 96, part 3. After the children of Israel were out of Egypt, they were supposed to reach the Promised Land in 40 weeks. Now, 12 spies were sent out to do a recon mission, basically to see what was in that land. But only two of them came back with a good report, basically saying, we can do this. The other 10, they said that the land was inhabited by giants and they, they, they were too mighty to overcome and they basically got the people scared and that really got pretty upset now if you want to know more about nephilims or giants or ufos i have go to go to episodes 26 through 29 and i'll tell you a lot more about that all right so god was very displeased and because of their unbelief the journey that was extended 40 years, not 40 weeks, but 40 years. So basically they got punished one year for every week. That generation basically died off, except the two brave spies. If you're curious, they were Joshua and Caleb. Even though God was angry with the nation of Israel, he had mercy on them. And for 40 years, you know, he fed them because he had manna from heaven. That was one of the implements that was inside the Ark of the Covenant. Um, come down to them daily. He even gave them water all the time, every day. Um, their clothes didn't wear out for 40 years. Their sandals didn't wear out. And their feet never swelled. And, you know, you were thinking, you know, I can see why the people were scared with those giants. Yes, I would, I would see that too. But it's not like God did it cold. He had 10 miracles coming out of Egypt, um, the strongest army then. He opened the Red Sea. He was feeding them. I mean, he was doing miracle after miracle, and they still doubted God. And I mean, how many times does he have to prove himself? We're kind of like the same way, too. And still, God wanted a relationship with them, so he had Moses build a sanctuary. And it taught him a few things, these three things here. It taught him moral law, which still applied today. You're still not supposed to kill. You're still not supposed to steal. You're still not supposed to cover your, your neighbor's wife, etc., etc., those still apply. Number two, civil law, which doesn't apply directly, but we get great wisdom from them and we get our own laws, a lot of them from this civil law here. And number three, ceremonial laws, which do not apply today, but that was how Israel became right with God through sacrificial system. Well, you can't talk about the sanctuary without talking about the high priest's garment. Okay, and this is the high priest, only one of them at a time. Um, so he had the turban up here, and the high priest's turban had gold on it, like this one. The other priest just had white. And then you had the onyx, and the onyx were on the shoulders. And basically, on the 12 tribes of Israel, six names were engraved on one of them, and six names were engraved on the other one too. And then you had the ephod, and the ephod... This one, two different pictures here, so you can get an idea. This apron-looking device here, that's, that's an ephod there. And this one shows an ephod like this behind the, the 12 stones. So there's a few variations because they haven't done this in, over, in about 2,000 years. So, I mean, there's a little bit of poetic license there. All right. So then you have the breastplate, which had a 12 tribes in it, okay, 12 stones in it of the tribes. Don't forget. Technically, it's 13 tribes, which the, high, the priests, all the Levites were the 13th, but they had a different contract. So the ones here were of the 12 tribes, the actual stones. And then you have the Urim and the Thummim. And basically, that went inside behind the breastplate. And they're not sure they were stones or kind of sticks. And they kind of worked in a, when they asked God a question, it was like a yes and a no, depending how they landed or, or something to that. I don't, I'm not sure about too much. But basically, God communicated them, communicated himself in three different ways. So the Urim, through dreams, and through prophets back then. Okay, And, and he, he had it behind the vest, behind the, the actual stones. And then you had the blue robe. Now, the regular priest had just a white robe, what you see him wearing here. But the high priest had an extra clothing which is this blue robe here only for the high priest and then at the bottom of it he had bells and he had pomegranates and basically they were to make noise okay because when he was the only one that can go into the 
Holy of Holies. And there was a rumor for years or a teaching for years that they had a rope tied to the high priest's ankle. That way, if you ever disobey God, they can just drag him out um, because nobody else can go in there. But, you know, God is very specific on what he wanted to for the high priest to wear. And that wasn't in there. So um, we also went to places where they had a, a mock setup of the temple. And they said that that was only, you know, a, a rumor or a teaching or a myth or something like that. All right, temple coverings. Now, let me try to go backwards on this. All right, temple coverings. The first one, the one right here, the one, the only one you can see when you first go in here. Okay, we're talking about this building right there, the temple itself. When you first go in, only the priests can go in, right? And when the priests went in there, they saw this embroidered, um, I call it a blanket, okay? But it was huge. And it had a bunch of angels in there, cherubims. And it was made of blue, it was made of purple, and it was made of scarlet, which is red. And that was the only one you can see of the four coverings from the inside. And basically, it had angels in it. And the angels were to remind Israel that one day they would be associated with the angels. Not that we become angels, because we don't. We don't get wings, we don't become angels. I'm not saying we can't fly when, that, when we have a resurrected body. I'm just saying angels are angels and, and we're different. Matter of fact, I believe there's a verse in the Bible where we're going to be actually higher. But that's another teaching. All right, let's go. The next one would be the woven goat hair. And some people say the black goat skin, okay? It was hard to, this line number three, I was on it for three hours. It was hard to verify it. But basically, the goat signifies sinful people. And, uh, and Jesus knew no sin. Okay, he never sinned. However, Jesus became sin for us, for our redemption, okay? And that's what that symbolizes. And the third covering from the inside would be the ram skin, and it was dyed red. And that symbolized the the blood of the blood, the redemptive blood. So the redemptive blood is covering the sins. And then one day we're gonna be with the Lord. And on the outside, in the King James it said badger skin. But that's a little that's another one that's a little bit difficult to look into because badger badgers were unclean animals. So they also said that it could be a seal like uh, material or porpoise, like dolphin type, right? Um, some type of marine creature, probably, because it was it was waterproof and it went over everything. And it was not very fancy. It was very ordinary. And that symbolized Jesus being basically non-attractive, being ordinary. And that's what that symbolized. All right, a little bonus. All right, now there's, there's a strange verse in the Bible where it talks about the Israelites were followed by a rock. And this is the rock where where it fed them. It, it, I don't think it was this big, okay? But it surely wasn't a trickle like this one down here. And it surely wasn't a little, little creek like this one down here. It had to be gushing like this because there was about two or three million people there. Okay, You have to have like a river. And some archaeologists say that this is the actual rock that was doing that one day. It has a lot of water wear on it in the desert on the rock itself. So they suspect this to be the rock. And I believe somewhere in the Bible it talks about the split here. I don't remember, okay? All right, so in, um, in that rock symbolized Jesus. Everything revolves around Jesus, okay? From like the second page of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15, about the Messiah coming to the very end, it's about Jesus redeeming us, basically. So God's always thinking about us. Now, animal sacrifices started way back in Adam and Eve, okay? When they sinned, and God clothed them with an animal that he actually killed himself because Adam and Eve were covered with fig leaves and that wasn't going to cut it. Fig leaves represent works and the animal represents somebody paid for your sins. And that was always the picture that Jesus was going to come and do it. I mean, like I said, the second page of the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15, talks about Jesus, the coming of Jesus. And all the way through Revelation, he's mentioned there. Jesus has always been the plan. God knew we were going to fall, but God had a plan for us to come out of this. And at the time of the sanctuary, reaching God was extremely difficult, and it was very exclusive. Only one person from the Jews, and then on top of that, it was a priest, and on top of that, 
it was the high priest one time a year that's extremely exclusive now we can come boldly and god is now nearer to us not yet face to face like we will be in the future but he's nearer to us now we are like high priests we can go directly to the father now and he listens to us um so you know jesus is the great high priest and that's in hebrews hebrews chapter 4. so the important question is are you ready to meet the lord are you ready to become a high priest through of course jesus in the forgiveness of the father right check out romans chapter 10 and first john for first chapter and if you found this video to be helpful do me a favor give me a thumbs up and share it and subscribe the subscription is what kind of passes the algorithms to other people and it puts it in front of other people so if you think i'm doing following the well the bible well uh, help me out and, and partner with me this is the bible ranger keeping the bible simple yet rich in content thank you